Friday. Last Friday. All right, so um, today is Friday, May 19th. It's been a big, exciting week. We had Senior Signing Day on Wednesday, also known as Priscilla's birthday. Uh, we've got prom coming up tonight, although if you're a DeRosier, you bought train tickets back in December. Train not like the vehicle, train the band, and we're going tonight. And so for the first time in possibly ever, I'm not going to go to prom. And I'm not going to see you guys in your tuxedos and the dresses and all the things. I would love to see pictures. I would love to oh, see pictures. Did. Send send me pictures. Text them, text them, text them. Um, and I'm always, I'm always amazed at prom when like some of the girls come up and I'm like, Ooh. Okay. <laughs> eye contact, eye contact, let's just look at you. I like you in uniform. Uniform works good for me. Um, anyway, I just know everyone is going to be looking fancy schmancy. Um, and so I want to have prom talk. We're going to keep it quick. You all have parents who love you dearly. And I bet they're already going to have different conversations with you. Right, I already heard the conversation about, we're going to have prom talk. And it's going to be, don't do something that's going to get you a baby. Like, no, I'm not going oh. to do that. That is, I'm all. I'm not encouraging the other. <laughs> okay. I just want to get this point across the plate really, really clearly. Prom is exciting. It is the natural culmination of all the things that have happened, and it's so exciting, and all the things in the movie. Good things from the movies. But you all are old enough to know that bad things happen too, right? Like our our friends at North Central last year. Two of their seniors were in a car accident, and one of them died. And one of them was hospitalized for a very long period of time, and I have no idea what happened to that person. But I know one of their seniors died prom night. And there are very few things that really authentically scare me. That's one of them. Right? Like, and it's not just, like, you made bad decisions. Like, I don't think they made bad decisions. I think they were just out after prom, and they get in a car accident. Like, things happen, bad things happen to really, really good people. And you all are like my kids. You are not my biological children. I have no legal standing in your lives, but I know from senior signing day when the three 34-year-old men came up and said, hey, Mr. DeRosier, I was like, oh dear God, whose father are you? And they're like, no, it's me, Mark Medina. Um, <laughs> Like, for real, you guys are in my heart. You, we have shared our lives together this year. You are in my, my life forever. Forever. Okay? So my request is this. Tonight, wherever you find yourself, no matter what you are doing after prom, if you get into a situation that you cannot manage, that you cannot handle, where you need some support, please give me a call. I will gladly without question, drive to wherever you are and get you home. That is the only thing I will do. Do not call me at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, I'm hungry. <laughs> Can we go to Denny's? No, we're not going to go to Denny's. I will figure out where you are and I will get you home. I would much rather do that than have you get into a car with somebody who is not in control and who has not made good decisions. I'd much rather that than, I don't know, some boy takes you down to the beach and decides that he has like certain rights and privileges. Hell no, he does not. And I will gladly remind him of that when I get from my house in Southwest Houston to Galveston in 22 and a half minutes with my baseball bat. <laughs> I will find a way to make that happen. We, the bat and I have taken a trip to Galveston once before. For real. I am more than happy to travel to Galveston with the baseball bat. For any one of the nine of you, for Myra, for the friends on the other side of the camera, friends at North Central, friends at East End, don't even really know what some of you look like. I will make sure I know like baseball bat goes in which direction. Um, <laughs> Girls make bad decisions too. Oh, but seriously, if you need anything at all, there is no judgment. There is nothing other than I will come get you and I'll take you home. Everybody okay? 
All right, if you guys can take out your phones, please. I want to make sure that you've got my phone number. 713-208-1538. I will have my ring. I don't normally have my ringer on. I will have my ringer on all night long. My wife understands how important prom season is to me. No, I have not lost anybody personal to me through prom, but like this, this is important. Okay. And now because you've all taken your phones out, please put them in the middle of the room. And uh, Mr. Link's going to take me down to the office. Okay. Try it. No, try it. <laughs> also know that there's a thing called Uber. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to answer that. Nobody needs... That's so funny. I just turned the phone on, and now the ringer's going on. Um, anyway, no, nobody needs prom help at 8.38 in the morning. Okay, everybody good? I got Pascal's triangle stuff. We've had prom talk round one. I get... Oh, that's you! Is that me? Here you go. Here you go. Okay, I thought I thought that I thought you were saying it was you. Nah, I think I got to do that. Somebody needs a bubble. Hello. Hello. Okay, no more. <laughs> this is why we keep the ringer off. I will figure out which one of you it is. My money's on Andrew now. It's Luis. It's Luis. No, it's Steven. It has to be Steven. No, it's not. Yeah, he just got It was Steven. But my phone is turned off. No, I don't. Why are we what? even guessing? Oh, no, I'm stuck doing it. <laughs> Alright, we've got 24 minutes left for another new calculus topic. Um, so I am in the packet. The first page. First, the actual first of the first pages. Um, and the topic is called the shell method. It specifically has to do with volumes of revolution. And there once was a time way, way back in the day where like this was like a new idea for us. Volume of revolution, right? We'd look at like a little rectangular slice, we'd spin it, that rectangle became a what when you spin it? That rectangle, this rectangle in particular, spin it around the x-axis, it becomes a a cylinder, right? And we knew, we know, maybe maybe for some of you it's new and no longer know, that the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So the volume became pi integral f of x squared with respect to x, or maybe even with respect to y, and we're integrating from a to b, and I hope everybody's okay with that. And part of why it works that way is that this little rectangle here is completely connected to the axis of rotation, and so what you get is a solid shape. Everybody's okay? Right, there is no test, we've been here before. All right, however, like sometimes you're gonna take a region and maybe the region, I know it's really hard to see, we're gonna to have to get a new bulb for next year. In this particular region, when I look at my rectangular slice, my rectangular slice doesn't actually touch the axis of rotation, and in that case, I don't get a cylinder, instead we get a, that rectangle gets spun around the axis, but it's not touching, which means you have a gap, so what you get is a washer. We're okay with the washing. Okay, so with the washer, don't ask me to draw a washer, I'm not gonna do that. The volume is always pi times big R squared minus pi times little r squared. And so your volume expression in this case is pi integral from A to B, <coughs> big F of X squared minus G of X squared dx. We've been here, we've done this, it went well. There is another way, and it used to be in the calculus AB course, like back in the day, like back in my day, and like you know, like the 1820s. Um, no, 1990. Ooh. Best senior class ever. My light blue tuxedo. Oh. You like that? Like that color? Of course. <laughs> no, no, the girl said so. Uh, my junior prom, it was a white tuxedo. Ooh. Stay with black. Black is good. Black is classic. Black, you can have that picture up forever. Um, anyway, back in the day, there was this thing called the shell method that was also done. We know cylinders. Don't Google it. Okay, we know cylinders. We know washers. I want to introduce you to the shell method. And here it comes. Oh, bummer. 
Hey, Pablo, for your last driving experience. Oh. <laughs> you want to drive down with your sketch pad? Sure. Are you driving tonight? No. Yeah. Okay. Please don't. I drive better than you, Carmen, so no worries. No, no, no one else no. can drive up. No, no, no. Okay, focus, but please submit your driving path. We'll post it. We want to know where your path is so we go around it. Okay, so what we're going to look at here is we're going to take this rectangle, we're going to take this region, and we're going to spin it not around the x-axis. We're going to spin it around the y-axis. Everybody okay? Now, when you spin this rectangle around the y-axis, hollow or solid? Hollow. Hollow for sure. Uh, a dx integral or a dy integral? dy. dy, right? If you're going to take this shape and spin around the y-axis, we would normally think about doing a dy integral. There is another way. Polymon, can you click revolve one rectangle? And so that may not have been what you were expecting. But it is another way to do this. Okay, that region is getting spun around the y-axis, but instead of my slices being horizontal, we're doing vertical slices. This is called the shell method. Because what you're doing is you're forming, you're forming a shell. Everybody okay? Not cylinders, not washers, shells. And so uh, prepare to revolve another one. Okay, and let's, let's revolve. Okay, like depending on how far away you are from the axis of rotation, you're either going to get a really big shell or you're going to get a really tiny shell. But when you actually revolve all of them, so let's see all shells, what you get is a whole series of these shells nested within one another. I don't know if you guys have ever seen like those, uh, those, those like wooden Russian dolls where there's like the, the big doll and the inside is a small doll and inside is another small doll. It's kind of like, I don't have one, I, I wish I did. Um, can somebody turn the lights back on? Okay, so I don't have the shells, but I do have a roll of tape. Okay, thank God for my roll of tape. And so when I think about the shell method, I think about a, I think about a roll of tape. If I wanted to find the volume with the shell method, what I need to know is the radius of the shell, and I need to know the height of the shell. Everybody okay? So the new volume formula, and we're just going to play around with one or two of these and see how well it goes. I only have you guys for 18 minutes. Um, let's do this one on page three. And Palomo, thank you. You're a fabulous driver. Mm -hmm. But for real, submit your driving plan. <laughs> Yeah, like tell me when you leave me and then you're there. Okay. Yeah, we really need to do something about this ball. Alright, using the shell method, determine the volume of the solid generated when the region bounded by y equals the cube root of x and y equals x from x equals 0 to x equals 1 is revolved around the line y equals negative 1. When you finish, solve the problem. When it comes to volume by shells, the setup is a little bit different. It's too high. It's going to be the integral from A to B. Let's say it's from X equals A to X equals B. What you need to know is the radius of the shell, and you need to know the height of the shell with respect to X or with respect to Y. But we're thinking shells going this way. The radius is the distance from the axis of rotation. The height is the height of the little rectangle, and, and we're spinning. So let's take a second and set this guy up here. We've got shell method from the volume. We've got cube root of x. Well, cube root of x looks something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. We've got the line y equals x. Bummer, that was supposed to pass through the origin. y equals x. Revolved around the line y equals negative 1. Which way is that line? Yeah, that's why I always ask y equals negative 1 this way. y equals negative 1 is horizontal. All right. So I want to take this region from x equals 0 
the two x equals one and revolve it around the line y equals negative one. I would hope that this is a comfortable problem. I know it's prom Friday and all the things, but take a minute, get it set up using the way that you know to do this, and then I'll show you the new way. something squared minus something squared dx. It's the big radius. Cube root of x. Cube root of x. I don't completely agree. Plus. Right. Your axis of rotation is y equals negative 1. So the big radius starts on your axis of rotation and goes all the way out to that outer curve. So that distance is not cube root of x, but cube root of x minus negative 1. Or, of course, we could say cube root of x and then plus 1. Small radius. Start on the axis of rotation. Small radius gets you over here. So what is that? x plus 1? Okay. Everybody totally okay with the setup? Okay, so how would you integrate from here? What would you do? So like maybe you like square this out, is that what you meant by like multiplying? Mm -hmm. Cube root of x plus 1 times cube root of x plus 1, do some algebra in there, combine like terms, same thing over here, and then integrate term by term, plug in, simplify, done, or plug it into the calculator. Check. That's how you would do it by cylinders. I want to look at the same problem using shells. If you're going to do this using shells, then you think about your representative slice differently. Rather than being perpendicular to your axis of rotation, we're going to think about the slice going this way. That's your slice. Your shell, right, we're still, we're still spinning, but we're spinning shells instead. And so, like, here's your, like, reflected guy over here. At first, it looks really the same, like, pretty much the same. What's different, though, is because you are now doing your integral parallel to the axis of rotation, if we're going to do shells, volume by shells, you would say it's 2 pi. We're going to do an integral. How are we integrating? Are we integrating with respect to x or integrating with respect to y? Think about the shells. Think about that roll of tape. We've got this guy getting spun around. We're going this way. Where do the other rolls of tape go? All right, like here's my big roll of tape. The next roll of tape would be like inside here. And there are going to be some that are outside here. You're actually doing an integral, not with respect to x, but with respect to y. Because the shells are getting wider this way, and they're getting narrower this way, right? Which is different from cylinders we integrate with respect to x. We're imagining the shells widening out this way and widening that way. So it's going to be from a y equals place to a y equals place. I need to know the radius, I need to know the height, and I need all these things with respect to y. Well, what's the radius of one of these little shells? Your radius goes from your center, your axis of rotation, to the outside. 
how long is it from here to the outside? Would it be one half of the three? Tell me more about this one half. So it would be like for the small one, it would be one half x minus one. I mean, one half times x minus plus one. One half times x plus one. Why one half? But the radius you're going from your axis of rotation up to here. And it has to be with respect to y. So the radius would go from here up to, let's call it um, y equals the cube root of x. Yeah. Uh, would it be, um, <clears throat> would it be uh, y uh, plus 1 and then on the for the All right from here on down that distance is going to be whatever the y value is plus one that's your radius the height of the shell goes this way the height you're basically you're, you're asking like how wide how thick is the tape the thickness if I'm measuring this way you might be thinking it's right minus left, which would tell you x minus the cube root of x. But you need to be careful. It has to be in terms of y's. So y equals x, well, obviously, that's the same as x equals y. y equals the cube root of x is the same as x equals y cubed. And so the difference between these two is, what is that, y minus y cubed? So this would be y minus y cube and you're integrating with respect to y. No, that was just the timer. <laughs> just the timer. Okay. It's the same region. It's the same three-dimensional object. It's just another way to approach volume of revolution. And volume by shells is something that, depending on the college that you go to, is taught in Calc 1 or it's introducing Calc 2. I at least wanted you to know that this method exists. That it's not always cylinders and washers, sometimes shells. Pieces like roll a tape, inside a roll a tape, inside a roll a tape, inside a roll a tape. Are you kind of okay? All right, see what you can do with this next one. We're not, we're not gonna have any time to even try to prove the formula. But there's a couple of practice problems on the back. If you want to use your calculator, if you even have your calculator with you, feel free. Some of you are like, mm, not anymore, coach. There are some calculators over there getting charged up. Fair. I look you up. solid revolution formed by revolving y equals x minus x cubed and the x-axis about the y-axis. Stephen, if I'm over here, can all the friends see? No. X minus x cubed and the x-axis. If you don't have access to your calculator, don't freak out about it too much. The graph of y equals x minus x cubed is cubic. So we should have an idea of what the ends do. Either doing this way or that way. Which way? This way? No. 
No, this way. Yes. Right? Because it's really the negative of x cubed plus x. So I've got a tail up here, I've got a tail down here. Anybody figure out the roots? One. X equals one is a root. Zero. Yeah, X equals zero is another root. And X equals negative one is going to be the last root. So the graph has to do something like that. That's the graph. Eh, I should have drawn that better. And here's the X axis. Okay, so I want to take this region and I want to, I'm want i going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. That region, and I want to spin around the y-axis. This is actually a problem that you could not do with cylinders. Um, like our, our old way of doing this, you might say, oh wait a second, if I'm spinning this way, then my slice goes that way. And you have an outside curve and you have an inside curve. There's a problem here. It's the same curve. They'll get the curve on the right and the curve on the left are the same curve. And there are ways to handle it, but this would be a kind of problem where I'd be like, there is no way, given a choice, that I would use cylinders, I would stay away from cylinders. Instead, I'm going to embrace my new knowledge about shells. So if we're doing shells, think about this guy here, it's getting reflected, it's getting revolved, rotated. Here's its reflection. There's my shell. In order to find the volume, the setup is going to be 2 pi. I need an, I need an integral. Respect to x or respect to y? Think about what's happening with the shells. The shells are spreading out this way and they're narrowing in this way. What's changing is the x. So it is going to be an x. We're going to go from x equals a place to x equals a place. I need the radius. I need the height with respect to x. The radius, you're just going to tell me how far are you from the axis of rotation. Here's the axis of rotation. How far away am I? That's what x is. What's the height? of any one of these little shells. Well, the height is going to be determined by whatever the function is. So this is going to be that negative x cubed plus x. And now the calculus gets like way easy. It's, oh, I need limits of integration, don't I? Yeah. Zero to one. So two pi integral from zero to one, <laughs> negative x to the fourth plus x squared with respect to x is going to be 2 pi negative 1 fifth x to the fifth plus a third x cubed. Evaluate from 0 to 1. Plug in the 1, it's 2 pi negative a fifth plus a third. Plug in 0, everything's 0. I see you, Andrew, making eyes at Carmen. Andrew's like, I don't care. I haven't. I stopped caring last Tuesday. Was it last Tuesday? Oh, was it before that? <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> okay. Is everybody mostly okay with shells? Not looking for mastery. Don't care about mastery. Just want to make sure you've seen it. You've thought about this. You've at least seen it here first. If it wasn't for the fact that it's one of these dreaded short days, the next move is we'd actually let go about proving that that is the right integration formula because I'm just asking you guys to believe me that it's 2 pi, the integral, radius, times the height. I believe in you. Lou's like, I'm fine with believing you. <laughs> but think about 2 pi rh, 2 pi radius times the height. Where would that even come from? Look, we're not going to go through all the calculus. 2 pi radius times the height. What? What part is the circumference? What? But out of the two pi r h, it's the two pi r, right? You're looking at the circumference of the shell times the height, right? So, like whatever that is, it's, that's not surface area, because surface area would include top and bottom. Imagine like going around the outside. That's your that's 
2 pi r times h, I think of it as like the label on a can. Yeah. Right? If I just had the label, and what happens, you're saying, oh, to find the volume, tear off. I can't do that because unfortunately, ah, nuts. Right? You're like, oh, it's the label on a can. So you tear off one of those. And now what you've got is like a smaller shell. I'll pick it up later. My OCD will not let it stay there. <laughs> right? 2 pi r h, you take off another label and you throw it away. But it's adding all those things up. It's down there now. I know. <laughs> that way is what would actually get you to the volume. And the labels are Right. All right. Friends, that's that. We sadly, for reals, have one class period left. Aww. And then we have the exam block in the rec in the gym. Sorry, it's southeast. It's a rec center. Here, it's the gym, right? Okay. So we're going to be in the gym next Tuesday for the whole exam block. Lots of activities planned. A, B, and B, C students. Even some secret activities. Tell Mr. Lee. See you guys later. I was kind of lazy. I'm going to go